Trump just got last laugh on racist ESPN host who came after him. Hell yeah. The outspoken Jamel Hill who was previously suspended from the Disney-owned ESPN Sports Network for calling President Trump a white supremacist on Twitter has now lost her job at SportsCenter. Her initial comments against President Trump granted her a suspension of two weeks in October for violating the company's social media guidelines. She called fans to boycott the Dallas Cowboys advertisers after owner Jerry Jones told players they would be benched if they did not stand up during the national anthem. It seems like ESPN is becoming tired of her antics and unprofessionalism that divides the country and pushes consumers away from ESPN. Sports is having an uphill battle with the nation and people protesting the flag. The last thing ESPN needs is another distraction that pushes customers away and now they're acting on it to make things better by kicking Jamel Hill to a position on a website that is mostly unknown. ESPN could be turning the tide in making things better with their relationship with Americans. Justice was done, and we now can confirm that Hill will be reassigned. She is primarily being demoted to a new role at the ESPN website The Undefeated. The Undefeated, according to Sports Illustrated, is an ESPN site that covers the intersections of sports and race. Yeah, I've never heard of it neither. ESPN insiders have now confirmed that the move was Hill's choice but in reality, sports talk radio host Clay Travis tweeted that she was booted due to collapsing ratings. So basically, we the people spoke. Travis has been keeping up with Hill's shenanigans and recently confirmed that he felt it was only a matter of time until she would be removed from Sports Center. Travis' speculation was supported by Sports Illustrated media guru Richard Deitch, who predicted that Hill's tenure as a Sports Center anchor was effectively over back in October of 2017. ESPN did not immediately respond to request for comment. Clay Travis is the head honcho behind Outkick the coverage. He was recently making headlines because he laughingly said boobs on television and the host pretended to act humiliated. Via Bloomberg View. Layoffs can't make up for the revenue lost as consumers abandon cable bundles. Now YouTube does the thing that made Sports Center famous. Photographer, Joe Robbins, Getty Images. ESPN, which laid off 100 people this week, has a multitude of problems. But the basic one is this, it pays too much for content and costs too much for consumers. That didn't used to matter because, thanks to the way the cable industry bundled channels, cable customers were forced to pay for it even if they never watched it. Now, however, as the cable bundle slowly disintegrates, it matters a lot. ESPN1, the worldwide leader in sports, as it likes to call itself is undoubtedly the most important channel in the history of cable television. Founded in 1979, it was airing professional basketball by 1982, too and the National Football League by 1987, when its long-running Sunday night football franchise began. ESPN showed that major sports events did not have to air only on the legacy networks like NBC and CBS. No cable distributor could do without it. Indeed. Since buying Capital City's ABC and its ESPN franchise in 1996, the Walt Disney Company has used the sports channel as a battering ram to force cable companies to accept price increases for other channels Disney owned, like ABC Family, Disney Junior and Dispenew. It also ruthlessly raised the cost of ESPN itself. Only a tiny handful of cable channels get more than $2 a month per cable subscriber. ESPN charges over $7 a month per subscriber. When you throw in the rest of the ESPN channels, that number approaches $10. At the same time, the content providers, the professional sports leagues and college conferences, were every bit as ruthless in their dealings with ESPN. The $1.9 billion a year ESPN pays the NFL, for one game a week, three and usually a lousy one at that is twice what any other network pays to air pro football. It signed a 12-year, $7.3 billion contract for the rights to the college football playoffs. The NBA costs it $1.4 billion a year. 
Its new TV deal with the Big Ten will cost it $2.64 billion over six years. Its annual content costs more than $7 billion, according to SNL Kagan. But then, starting around 2013, the model began to sputter. Over the last four years, ESPN has lost around 12 million subscribers, from over 100 million to 88 million, which costs it well over $1 billion in annual revenue. It remains immensely profitable, but it is no longer the reliable cash cow for Disney that it once was. ESPN has responded with a series of cutbacks, goodbye Chris Berman, of which the layoffs this week are simply the latest. In the scheme of things, though, the cost savings are jump change, and have served mainly to show ESPN's overlords at Disney, and Disney's overlords on Wall Street, that it is serious about riding the ship. But it's a pipe dream to think that ESPN will ever make the kind of profits, $6.4 billion in 2014, that it once did, for two reasons. First, as is the case with so many other industries, the Internet has both shined the light on the flaws of the cable model and exploited them. What was the main flaw of the cable model? It was that consumers had to pay for channels they never watched. And now they don apostrophe t. Let's hope ESPN learns their lesson that Americans don't want to see sports and politics intertwined. When people watch sports, then they want to be entertained, enjoy themselves and forget about whatever is going on in the world. But don't take my word for it, look at the NFL ratings this year. And if Jamel Hill needs a reminder about what the president has done for African Americans, then she can look at the unemployment rates for African American males which have made an excellent stride in the right direction.